who controls the water supply? That depends on where you live. Some places, the state controls. Other places, it's controlled by the private sector. So if you have the means to pay, your water flows like this. If you don't have the means to pay, your water supply could be like this. This water channel has been here since 1129. It's gone through some changes in that time. But without a basic, stable water system, there is no society, it simply doesn't function. So today, in the 21st century, is it important to ask, do we need a basic human right to water in the European Union? And if so, who should implement it? Should it be the local authorities? Should it be the member states? Or should it be the European Commission? United Nations has approved already, without any vote against in the General Assembly, that the access to basic uh, quota of uh, uh, water quality, potable water, uh, and the basic sanitation services must be recognized as a human right. Why should Europeans have a basic human right to water? Why? <laughs> it's, so, it's so basic. Why? Because people cannot live without water. People cannot live without access to energy. These are the most basic things that everyone should have the right. And because it's a question of human rights, of dignity. If you have a government, you have to provide basic needs for people. And water is number one of the needs, of course. So if you as a government can't provide water, I mean, then you are failing a lot here. Europe at present is not at that level. We have lost. Uh, in some way, we can say we have lost our leadership. We still have uh, quite a few member states where access to water is uh, not as generous and as well covered as we would expect. A lot of Europeans have been denied access to water, mainly in the countries which are in a very, very difficult situation. For instance, in Portugal, every week that passes, 3,000 families get out of water. They don't even have the water to prepare the milk to, to provide to their children. There's a huge fallout of girls at a secondary school because of a lack of sanitation, uh, that there is no separate toilet for girls and boys. So the consequence is, in, for example, countries like Romania and Bulgaria, that girls do no longer attend school. Northern Europe takes its water supply for granted. Southern Europe has become used to droughts and water shortage, but it's not drought which is the greatest threat to the European water supply, it's privatization. As public cash flow dried up, international financial organizations, including the IMF and the World Bank, increasingly insisted that indebted European governments sell their public water services to reduce their debt. The result has been disconnection from the water supply for tens of thousands of European families. It's hard to see how an American company could not buy into a European water company and be in control of it that way. Is there some uh, mechanism that you see that, that will help us keep European goods within European hands? It's so difficult to have an appropriate answer because we, we have to uh, balance all the interests and all the sometimes even uh, competing uh, legal elements uh, of this matter. In a single generation, water has become a multi-trillion euro industry. Fortune magazine predicted in May 2000 that water was about to become one of the world's great business opportunities. Fortune commented that water promises to be to the 21st century what oil was to the 20th. This means we'll probably get all the bombing, shooting and invading which has characterized the global struggle for control of oil. The commission, as part of the Troika, is asking to further privatize Aquas de Portugal. So in the Troika, the Commission is still pushing for privatization. So if it is really a human right, and if we really are serious to the citizens and to this initiative, we should start acting. And I do assume that in a second round, the Commission will be a bit more concrete on what we are going to do on policy. We were very angry with uh, the Troika on their approach to, our, to Greece. Two well-functioning uh, water companies in the big cities. The, the Troika is saying, well, Greece, uh, sorry, you have to sell them um, because we want, want our money back. And it's mainly French companies or Spanish companies. So in that sense, you do see the lobby is strong in France and Spain. 
and they used the French commissioner to try to push this agenda at the European level. How do we come to this position, a million European citizens without direct access to water supply and sanitation? I, I think that uh, one of the reasons probably is that water was uh, recognized more as a commodity than, than a public good. I think that we, uh, we made a lot of mistakes over the last 10 years in Europe and, and part of it was uh, this feeling that we are clearly now in this uh, post-industrial service-based uh, uh, economy. The Liberals within the European Commission argue that without private investment, this happens. The whole system will seize up. Water will not be provided across the whole of Europe. But critics say this simply isn't true. The private sector, they say, is only interested in the profitable side of the framework. The cities, which are uh, compact, easier to manage, the rural side will be neglected. But we need a framework because water supply is not ending at the border. Water supply is an issue, a cross-border issue. So we need a framework. We develop a framework in the European Union. Uh, but we have to analyze that the Water Framework Directive is fulfilled completely in the European Union and we are far, far away. A study made by the European uh, Environment Agency says that uh, when water is in the public domain, uh, the, um, the, it, the costs can be low, but it can be covered and there is a small margin of profit that can be used just to rebuild the infrastructures or to repair infrastructures uh, and to keep the prices low. In Italy, 50 or 60 of these will cover your water bill for the whole year. In Germany, 80 or 90 coffees pay for your water. What is the idea of, of selling water, of not providing the water to those who cannot pay for that? It would be as reasonable as, for instance, starting to ask people to pay for the air that they need to breathe. We cannot survive without water, so is it uh, feasible that we can present a right to life and not include within that a right to water? Uh, the, the right to water was already recognized also by, uh, uh, in several uh, resolutions of the UN as a, as a human rights. I think, of course, it's very... It's a very interesting concept and I know now that organizers are pushing for even more clear recognition of this right and I think we just would simply uh, have to see that how much uh, we can push uh, the, the, the boundaries of the, of the European law and our international obligation in this particular question. What if you cannot afford to pay for water? In most northern European countries the state will provide your basic needs. But this is not true across the European Union. There is no basic right to water in the European Union which means there is no basic right to life. If it is a human right, then it also should be Europeanly accepted that water is a human right and should never be privatized. Freedom of press, freedom of expression, all these kind of more values. But I think if we were talking about services, then clearly water is one of the most important ones, at least to make sure that that is being provided in Europe. European Commission should be as much committed to provide human rights and basic rights to people as they are committed in providing uh, money, liquidity to the banking sector, for instance. This should be a good opportunity to really um, uh, make uh, the access to water uh, a human and universal right. Uh, however, I'm obviously very skeptical about this uh, outcome of the Commission. And but we'll go on fighting for that. We want to have one thing very clear put the right to water into law so that any other initiative from the Commission should always make sure that access to affordable water is in place. We're coming up to election season. It's been nice to win the elections with the European Commission uh, announcing the prospect of a right to water across Europe. Of course it would, <laughs> of course it would because I was uh, really uh, paying a lot of attention uh, to the Right to Water initiative, especially because it was really the, the first one, which was so much supported uh, by the European citizens. This could be the Commission's first populist policy. We'll see. We'll see. Because <laughs> uh, usually, you know, I mean, uh, we don't do uh, we don't do populist policies here because we. All, we are guardian of the, of the European law and I can tell you that we have all legal services looking into everything we do because we know that whatever we do it could be challenged in the European Court of Justice and therefore we are very much sticking to the, to the, to the letter of the law. American writer Mark Twain said, whiskey is for drinking, water is for fighting over. It's no coincidence that the James Bond film Quantum of Solace features a war over water, not over oil. And in a declassified CIA report, 
the CIA said they didn't expect there to be global conflict over water within the next decade. So the issue of a basic human right to water is an issue which has been shaken and still stirring. This is the world's most precious resource. We need to control as much of it as we can.